These are impressions that Alex, our cameraman, shot a few weeks ago in the only English-speaking Catholic parish in Geneva, the John Paul XXIII parish, an interfaith celebration in Geneva on the occasion of the World Day of Peace. This interfaith, traditional annual event in the framework of the World Day of Peace, is organized by the permanent mission of the Holy See to the United Nations in Geneva, together with the Diocese of Lausanne, Geneva and Freiburg. This year, in addition to representatives of various religions, His Eminence Cardinal Michael Czerny, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Promotion of Integral Human Development, came from the Vatican. The Holy See's representative to the UN in Geneva, His Excellency Archbishop Fortunatus Nwachukwu, presided over the event, which he described as an interfaith celebration of prayerful reflection on the precious and fragile value of peace. We now talk with the Archbishop about, among other things, what interfaith dialogue is and whether the Holy See has an evangelization mandate at the UN in Geneva. We all need each other. Now here on EWTN TV UN Block. Good afternoon. In his message for the 56th World Day of Peace on January 1st, 2023, Pope Francis said, and I quote, We can no longer think only of protecting the sphere of our personal or national interests, but we must conceive of ourselves in the light of the common good, with a sense of community that is as an us, open to an all-embracing fraternity. We must not seek only our own protection, but it is time for all of us to work for the healing of our society and our planet and to lay the foundations for a more just and peaceful world that is serious about a common good that is truly inclusive. It was in this spirit that the Holy See Mission to the UN in Geneva, as it does every year, hosted an interfaith event in Geneva at the end of January. I'm now connected with the Holy See Mission in Geneva and welcome there His Excellency Archbishop Fortunatus Nwachukwu. Greetings, Excellency. Good day, Christian. I mentioned at the beginning that this year, besides representatives of different religions, there was also an important visit from Rome. His Eminence Cardinal Michael Czerny, Prefect of the Dicastery for the Promotion of Integral Human Development. It seems that the Holy See in Geneva especially is very much interested in these annual interfaith celebrations. Yeah, it is a very important um, celebration for us. Actually, we celebrate it as the national feast of um, the Holy See here in the mission of the Holy See. There are other missions, non churches that celebrate the national day of the Holy See on the feast of Saints Peter and Paul at the end of June, or on the day of the election or the installation, the enthronement of the Pope. Here we celebrate uh, the day we make public the message of the Pope on the World Day of Peace. And this is very important and, um, um, uh, for us here because of the peculiar nature of this mission, which follows the um, multilateral questions, not just human rights, but also questions related to disarmament and arms control and a myriad of other questions. So for us, the question of peace is fundamental and it is important for us to bring to the uh, notice of everybody, the awareness of everybody, the message of the Holy Father to mark every year the World Day of Peace. And that is what we celebrated last uh, 31st of January. 
In your opening remarks, you quoted the Holy Father who said in his word, Day of Peace message, the greatest lesson we have learned from COVID-19 is to realize that we all need each other. End quote. Unfortunately, isn't it also the case with religions, different religions, that it seems to take a disturbing event, a crisis, to show us that we need each other, whether we belong to a religion or not? Well, Christian, you are correct there. It is not really a question of religion. It is a question of our human nature. Quite often when things are going well, we tend to forget God and forget our need of others. We tend to become selfish and self-centered. But when things begin to go bad, when we have difficulties and crises, we think to remember God. We think to remember that we need one another. Um, this is a normal uh, tendency we have among us. And it is therefore uh, an important thing for us to draw attention, especially at this moment of crisis. As the Holy Father said, um, first, the COVID-19 taught us that none of us can uh, save himself or herself alone. We need one another. And that is a major point, a central point in the message of the Holy Father, reminding us that the most precious thing we have, and also which is a, a, a most fragile thing, which we can easily destroy or lose sight of, is the fact that we are all brothers and sisters in one family. You also record Pope Francis's call for an immediate end to the war in Ukraine. Is this goal, from your observation, shared by all religions or their representatives? Well, Christian, this is a very complex situation. Um, the invasion of Ukraine and the war in Ukraine have created a very peculiar problem and have become a major challenge to multilateralism, um, the search for peace. Um, when a person is provoked, it requires a great act of courage to pull back from the brinks of the search for revenge or to show one's strength. Um, that is why the Pope, right from the beginning, took very decisive steps, um, courageous steps, trying to um, stop uh, one side from reacting in a certain way to a provocation, more than provocation, um, an aggression, and also trying to bring back the other from the brink of um, uh, pushing aggression, the Holy Father has right from the beginning tried to work for peace and call for peace. And the um, uh, Holy Father and the Holy See have all the time remained on that path of calling everybody for peace. It is true that people can manipulate religion and use religion even to justify um, heinous acts and heinous crimes. People even have used religion to try to justify uh, things that dehumanize fellow human beings. But the Pope has underlined, especially in his encyclical um, Fratelli Tutti, that every authentic religious teaching underlines um, the importance of peace and underlines the need for all believers to look for peace because all authentic teaching of religion moves towards fraternal love. Every religion I know looks for uh, fraternal love. And that is why it is really surprising that people of faith, you, I told you sometime ago that myself, as somebody who grew up in a culture that received Christianity from Western missionaries, 
I feel, I felt and I feel scandalized that the two parts involved in this conflict are two and many um, majority Christian populations. How can we call ourselves Christians and still be killing one another in this way? We forget especially the teachings of Jesus Christ. I keep calling attention to this and that is John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. Jesus saying to his disciples, I give you a new commandment. Love one another, no longer like you love yourselves, but as I, Jesus, have loved you. And that means loving one another, even in a sacrificial way. And then Jesus adds in verse 35, he says, it is by this love that people are going to know that you are my followers. It is by this love that people are going to know that you are my followers. And based on this, the Holy Father has said some very strong things. The Holy Father said, let me remind us. He said, it is blasphemy to kill in the name of God. And he said also, it is satanic to kill in the name of God. I hope all my brothers and sisters who are Christians will know that you cannot use religion to kill. You cannot use Christianity in any form of it to justify killing. And the Holy Father is very clear about that. Any authentic use of religion, particularly Christianity, cannot tow any other line that is not the line of peace, the line of fraternity, the line of sincere search for common good. The content of my next question, Excellency, reminds me of an interview we shot in 2016 with your predecessor, Nuncio Archbishop Ivan Jurkovic at the UN in Geneva. He had just arrived in Geneva as the new Nuncio and we asked him what impressed him the most at the first UN conference he attended. I was I'm also impressed by the Muslim delegation that started with the quotation Quran. No? It is uh, somehow bringing a sacred environment to, to a very lay, uh, how to say, organized organization, I would say. Well, the Archbishop seemed to be very impressed by the Muslim delegation. My question now, does the important work, your work, of the Holy See at the United Nations in Geneva and other international organizations like, for example, Muslim organizations, have an aspect of evangelization. Of course it does have a Christian, but I have to uh, make a distinction. There is a difference between evangelization and proselytism. In evangelization, I tell you what I believe in. I expose to you the truth of what I believe in. I don't try to impose it on you. I don't even try to draw you into it. If I, once I begin to try to draw you into what I believe in, or try to force you to believe, to follow what I, I believe in, directly or indirectly, that may become proselytism, and um, we don't do that. Um, we don't try to force other people to embrace our religion. So evangelization in the sense of Sharing, actually there's something people also call the sharing of best practices. That is not forcing another person uh, to follow you. You just tell people, look, this is good. It has been good to me. It could also be good to you. Now evangelization does not impose. Evangelization exposes the truth, takes the liberty and the freedom of choice of the other person into consideration. Yes, at the United Nations, we try our best to expose the goodness of what we believe in, the truth of what we believe in. And that truth is contained in Jesus Christ for us, because Jesus himself taught us in John 
chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, he goes on to say, no one can come to the Father except through me, and that is except through the truth. So anybody, I think that every religion also has its own expression of truth. And truth is always truth, not subjective truth, not relative truth, but fundamental truth, like that all of us love our life. Life is to protect it. Human dignity is to be defended and protected, and common good is to be pursued. When we speak about these, I've had occasion in the past to mention that the engagement of the Holy See in multilateralism could actually uh, be brought down, summarizing in these three points. Defense of life, defense of human dignity, and the search for common good. When you call this evangelization, then, well, it is evangelization because um, evangelization, if we actually go back to the um, Greek origins of the words eo and eo uh, angelizo, which means announcing the good news, the good news, um, bringing the good news, well, we tell people, look, the good news you are announcing is defending human life, defending human dignity, and searching for the common good. In that sense, yes, we do evangelization, but if it is proselytism, no, we don't do proselytism. I would also like to mention here that in addition to the Vatican, the World Council of Churches has also distanced itself from proselytism. It did so with the 1997 memorandum towards a common witness. As for interreligious dialogue, Pope Francis has called on women in particular to build together a culture of interreligious encounter. And during his visit last September to Kazakhstan at the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, the Pope said, I quote, The great wisdoms and religions are called to bear witness for all people to the existence of a common spiritual and moral heritage based on two cornerstones, transcendence and fraternity. Francis said, with transcendence in mind, it is beautiful that every day millions upon millions of men and women of different ages, cultures and social conditions gather for prayer in countless places of worship. This is the hidden force that keeps the world moving. Fraternity points out that no one can profess true attachment to the Creator if he does not love his creatures. Thanks for watching. God bless.